Well, I have no disclosures, except that I do a lot of CT and MR, and so I think it's the only thing that matters. Uh, as you can see here, that's true. Okay. So when we do CT procedural planning, an important thing which you may not think about is how do we acquire the data? Because if you don't have the data acquired properly, you're not going to be able to analyze it properly. And we look at images throughout the cardiac cycle. That's important. And you want the whole chest, too, so we can look at access. You need to be able to assess the mitral annulus with dedicated mitral software. You look at the size and the geometry, the landing zone. We should be able to predict LVOT obstruction, look at fluoro angles, and have specific access planning. Now, there are various ways of putting in a, a valve in what situation. So when we do a TMVR in a valve, you have to plan what part of the cycle you're going to fully radiate, or you'll give people very high doses. In elderly people who have no options, that's irrelevant, but in the future it will be relevant. And so we want to pick the part of the cycle where it's best, most likely to stop motion. The valve ring does not move throughout the cycle, and so we'll pick whatever part that is. And here's an example where we have a known mitral annular size by history, but sometimes the history is wrong, so we literally go ahead and map it out and get the actual size. And then after we achieve that and say, yes, we know that is the valve, we want to reconstruct the end systolic interval, and we just choose this arbitrarily at the point where the aortic valve is still open. When it starts to close, that's not the uh, part that we use. We then program in the valve size, and this again requires special software, and bracket the position. Uh, and Dr. Guerrero talked a lot about what's the actual LVOT area that's acceptable, and of course we don't really know. And, but we will use certain parameters. So here, at 35%, you can see there's complete outflow obstruction when you're placing the valve all, with no atrial uh, position. And then when you put it at 6 millimeters atrialized, you still have very little uh, neo-LVOT. And at 8 millimeters, you barely meet criteria, and not quite. And I was hesitating on this, and all of a sudden the patient came back for his repeat CT, and I didn't know anything about it, and was told that he was cleared. He was okay. So a 29 was placed, and what we got was a, what looks like LVOT obstruction, but actually no gradient. And then when I went back on the post-CT and realized this was about 6 millimeters. So it shows that what we had predicted was correct and fortunately didn't cause LVOT obstruction. What about valve and MAC? And there are a lot of sophisticated ways of doing this. This is uh, something that we do do. And when you look at valve and MAC, there's not a regular place for landing. And you can see here multiple ways of uh, physically looking at it in motion. And you'd like to have calcium at least 270 degrees, and you want it to be anterior. In this particular case, which is a little bit older, uh, we got a, a polynometer in area, which would uh, fit a 23 a Sapien XT valve, which is what we had at the time. And here we place the valve in and then go ahead and look at the Neo-LVOT. You can see the val valve is spherical and the area is not, and you want to oversize. And in this case, we predicted a, a residual area of 2.3 centimeters squared using a 2, millimeter, uh, a two centimeter <coughs> LVOT area as what uh, our goal is. And here we give the angle, the valve is placed, and the patient comes back with minimal LVOT obstruction that's responsive to fluids. So what happened? In the post-CT, I then polynomitered the area with the leaflet on the outside of the leaflet and got 1.3 centimeters squared. And if you exclude the leaflet, it was essentially what we predicted with, with the device before. So the leaflet is, uh, is something that we can't be completely certain about. Here was another case where the mitral annulus was relatively large, and if we placed a, a sapien number 29, we wouldn't be able to oversize. And Paul put in a, a tendine valve that has an apical tether, and so it's got a different anchor and this worked well. Now, when we have the native mitral annulus, you need to do a special thing with the software, and that's to segment out the posterior leaflet. You go around from trigone to trigone. Anatomically, there's a saddle shape, and so the anterior part that goes up into the aortic valve is excluded here when you draw a straight line from trigone to trigone, and that's the best method for sizing. You create a 2D projectional image that gives you a lot of different parameters so you can fit the proper valve. You want to look at the landing zone characteristics that include MAC that can interfere with the anchor, and then look at left ventricular outflow tract issues in systole like we talked about. But a lot depends upon the design that you're placing. You want to look at the aortomitral angle, which is worst in systole, so you need to see it then, and then see how this is canting to see if it will cause outflow obstruction. 
So here's a case with severe uh, functional mitral insufficiency as a high-risk surgical patient. And we're planning for an intrepid valve. In this valve, we polymeter the posterior portion and then draw a line from trigone to trigone and create our size. You want to interrogate it specifically to look for the subvalvular apparatus. The, the image to the right shows one that, that failed a screen. This is a different patient. And then in functional MR, you want to actually average the peak systole and diastole uh, as far as the size goes. And it has to do with trying to minimize wear on the valve. And we also look at the left atrial height. And then we create an aortomitral angle in systole. And this is the, the way people in Vancouver do it. Uh, and then you'll see that the worst would be when it's completely perpendicular. You then have an STL file, which mimics the mitral valve. Place that in the LVOT and then make your measurements to see if this will fit. You create angles, and that you can have the TT view, which is almost never achievable in the cath lab. The SL view, septolateral, is often achievable as it is here, but you also create a compromise view, so you give people options in the cath lab. Then you can uh, create an image which is perpendicular to the valve directly, and it's almost always in the anterolateral wall above the apex, and we can then superimpose this, as was 12 degrees anterolateral, superimpose this on a VRT and show what we used for the actual placement. Uh, we can do CT afterwards, and every one of the bioprosthetic valves has the potential for halt, and here's an example of that. Or you can do the same thing after a tendine valve. In this case, you can look at the apical tether. And in here, we also measured the LVOT to see if, in fact, what was predicted was real, and it was. So in conclusion, you need dedicated mitral software to assess the mitral valve. A valve and valve LVOT obstruction can be predicted by simulating a valve. A valve and MAC is more difficult, and it requires a lot of choices about measuring the area with attention to anchoring and outflow obstruction. And then the TMVR and the native MVA requires a lot of the specific measurements that you saw, as well as attention to specifics related to the specific valve you place. So thank you. I'm going to say that if there are sure. any questions. Sure. Certainly, if there are any questions, please come up to the podium. Just um, one, one question I have is for those that don't have the software, what are some of the software options that are common that seem to be more user-friendly, you know, not, without getting, you know, too much into what your preference is, but if you can give just a little bit sure. of perspective where, and I'm sure a lot of the vendors are here and people then can well, go seek them out. Right. In my experience, there are really only two softwares that are designed for this, and that's 3Mencio and then it's Circle, and you, you saw images from Circle, and they're very similar and they were developed uh, along the same pattern. Uh, what you do is you, it's by segmenting out the specific attachment points, uh, along the posterior mitral valve. That's the key issue. And then having this STL file for whatever new valve you place, and that's the, the valve that actually fits the valve you're going to place and have it programmable. Uh, and, and most of the software, at least with a circle, we only have the Sapien that's programmable. The other you have to import in specially. I don't know about three minutes yet. I just wanted to say congratulations and great talk. And, and I just wanted to mention that the one thing that has saved lives in the last four years since we started doing this TMVR, it's been CT planning. It's so, so important. And back then, four years ago, when we didn't have these softwares, for at least for Mac, the difficulty was understanding where in that donut of calcium was right. the leaflet insertion. So I remember when we were going to do the first case, it's like, okay, where do we put the valve? Where is the leaflet? So we manually were trying to work with the what was it, the, the, the hard navigator at that time, and tried to place and try to try superimpose the CT and put dots manually where we thought the leaflet insertion was right. to try to land it. Now, you know, you see all these tools, so I think it's, it's been a great, great uh, progress in a short period of time and great picture. John, can I ask, you, you talk a lot about pre-procedural imaging. What about procedural overlay, fusion imaging, huh. the cath yeah. lab? You see utility in that? I mean, uh, yeah, help us I, understand I, how that might be helpful. Right, right. I think so. I, the, the problem is registration. So breathing mm -hmm. moves the heart a great deal. Mm -hmm. uh, and then if you, though, if you have certain parameters that are fixed within the object itself and the person itself, then you'll be able to see relatively. Mm -hmm. And you could even understand that these are done with a inspiration. So if someone were intubated, you could do that. Mm -hmm. But it would, it's not exact. And we're going to actually try to do the same thing. And I know they've done the same thing at Mass General with coronaries for total occlusion. I think this would be a much easier approach uh, with this. Mm -hmm.